Hello, everybody. It's about that time. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Look at this great big bottle with wax on it. Wax? What the hell you put that on there for? So we can charge more money. That's why. Does absolutely nothing for the beer other than making it cost more. Just my opinion. The beer is under pressure. It's trying to get out. So why is there wax put on it? Are you going to lay this down like a wine bottle? Not recommended. You could, I guess. But uh, there is no cork or cage in it. You don't need to keep the cork wet like you would lay a wine bottle down to keep the cork moist and the air doesn't get in it. This has a cap on it. No cork. No cage. Tits on a borehog, as far as I'm concerned. Wax just makes the beer cost more. Pain in the ass to get off. Useless. Tits on a borehog. So, that's how I feel about it, guys. This makes the beer cost more. Somebody has to stand at the end of the bottling line and dip each, dip each bottle in a little thing of wax to make it cost more. That's how. That's why it happens, guys. You'll never convince me any other reason. It has a metal cap with a plastic liner in it. So why do you need wax on it? Why do you want to lay it down? I don't ever lay any beer down on their sides. Never, ever. If you don't have room to put your beer standing straight up, you need to get a different refrigerator or a different method of storing your beers. Uh, this is my two cents. This is my two cents, guys. It's just a price increasing thingy that they do to make the beers cost more. All right, this comes from uh, uh, River Horse Brewing. Uh, this is their small batch Stouty Stout, aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, these guys are out of New Jersey. This was sent to me by my brother Rico, and I'm sure this is a pricey beer. So let's see what he wrote in his notes. 2017 River Horse Small Batch Stouty Stout, aged in bourbon barrels, 12% Imperial Stout with cocoa and vanilla, aged in Woodward Reserve bourbon barrels. Very nice bourbon. Original $16, but paid $11 sale price. Absolutely awesome. If you can get this beer for $11, and it's in a 750 bourbon barrel aged, and have somebody stand at the end of the line and dip it in wax, out freaking standing. That's an excellent, that is an excellent price for this beer. No vintage date, but it should be a 2017 since it was just released this year. So we don't know when it was released. They haven't dated it, but we know it's a 2017. Did they do it in January? Did they do it in June? Did they do it in September or October? We don't know. But it's an imperial stout, aged in bourbon barrels, 12%. Not super critical on, on, uh, on that aspect. We know it's a this year's edition. So, uh... Uh, let's run over to Untapped and see if they have any additional information. No IBUs for this beer. And no date, other than 2017, we think. Uh, Imperial Stout with Cocoa and Vanilla Asian Woodford Reserve Barrel. Same thing that Rico told me here in his letter. So that is all the information we have on this. So, uh, without any further ado, final beer of the evening for me. Uh... And this great big bottle is enough to pour the other half a glass, and I'm sure she will enjoy that too. Uh, that's it. So I have to get the old trusty knife out to carve off this silly ass wax that they've uh, decided this beer needs. And it's a very thick wax. 
as you can see where it's run down the sides of the bottle. This uh, this is useless as far as I'm concerned, guys. I guess y'all figured that out by now. I'm not a fan of wax. I'm not a fan of foil on the on the on the bottle end. Those are just things that make the beer cost more. If you store this beer correctly, and it has been capped correctly, you do not need the ouch. It ain't gonna cut anything but myself. Kind of stab myself in uh, in the hand with this. Another another reason why I hate this freaking shit. This is asinine. Whoever decided they need to put wax on this, I wish they'd have their gonads cut off. We just gotta get physical here. Whittle this barking shit off. And I'm bleeding here. You gotta cut yourself to enjoy the freaking beer. Come on, guys. Don't put wax on your fucking beers. That is, this is, this is stupid. This is really stupid. They'd be damn lucky if I don't carve a grade point off it because they put wax on their freaking bottles. That's asinine. Bear with me here, guys. I'm carving on the wax that uh, some idiot thinks it needs. Well, at least, at least while I'm carving on the wax here, I would tell you I'm glad that Rico uh, got a good deer on, good deer, good deal on this beer. Uh, and eleven dollars, I do think, is a good, good deal for a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. So, well, maybe we got enough of this horse hockey carved off to at least get it open and get it in the glass. Nice little hiss. Of course, now we got wax all over the damn place. What a bunch of. Nah, I ain't gonna say it. I'm done. Let me get this thing fired back up. This computer only stays lit for about 30 seconds if you don't touch it. Alright. Let's continue. Food pairings and cheeses of buttery brie, good Havarti Swiss. It goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course, digestive. Meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass right of pint, back and on, tumbler snifter, oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter and can be solid for long periods of time. All right. We got it in there. I have had several offerings from uh, River Horse Brewing. Uh, to me, guys, those guys are kind of hit and miss. Uh, they're, uh, they're better beers, hopefully, which is hopefully one of are pretty tasty. Uh, they do make some stuff that's mm, kind of meh to me. So, uh, about an eighth of a finger of head on that beer. Over into the light, it is pitch black. I don't have any information or any idea how long they left it in the bourbon barrels or whether it was first run bourbon barrels, never had beer in it before. But it is a good looking beer. Give it to the nose. I am getting a little bit of the alcohol at 12%. Not getting a huge bourbon note on this. I know some of these beers, guys, the bourbon is just off the chain. Some of them, not so much. Uh, but it would actually depend, like I said, whether it was a first run bourbon barrel and never had beer in it before and how long they left it in that barrel. But it does have a little bit of the booziness on it. So the alcohol is not super well hidden, but it is a 12 percenter. Rich roasted malt, maybe some hen or some brown sugar or black molasses. Maybe a slight hint of some bourbon notes, and those notes may come out. It's right out of the fridge as it warms up. We might get more some of those bourbon notes as it opens up and, 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 and comes up to room temperature. There may be even some slight hint of some dark fruit in there. Maybe some licorice or some dates or figs. But I am getting some of that alcohol from that booze in us. So let's see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Mm -hmm. 
almost has like a venomous uh, grapes in the taste. Uh, to me, it almost seems like it's, it's been in maybe a, a wine barrel or something. As it's opening up, that last sip, I am getting more of the bourbon. So we probably need, for this particular one, we probably need to let it come up to room temperature more before I make any more comments. I'm sure it is going to be a tasty beer. Uh, but the bourbon, I will tell you, is not off the chain like a lot of the bourbon barrel. As soon as you open it up, you start smelling the bourbon and you taste it. It's taking up the whole front seat and the back seat. Um, this one, not so much. Now, maybe as it warms up, those notes and aromas and tastes will will come out a little bit more. So let's do that. Uh, I don't want to leave him out for beer because uh, a lot of these beers are made to be drank between 55 and 70 degrees, not 40 like this one is just right out of the fridge. So let's let this warm up, pour her a glass, sip on a for a while, uh, fire up that stogie I got out on the deck and uh, enjoy this one for a while. These 12 percenters are sippers, guys. You wouldn't want to pop the top on this after you carved the damn, spent 10 minutes carving your wax off the top of it to get into it and uh, chug it all down in two or three minutes. Uh, this is meant to be sipped on for a while. So let's do that and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little left in here. I uh, was hoping it would come up and improve a whole lot. It has not. Uh, I am getting a slight hint of the bourbon in there. To me, guys, my honest opinion, either they didn't put it in a first run bourbon barrel that had beer in it before, or they didn't leave it in there very long at all to get those big bourbon notes because the Woodford uh, bourbon is very, very potent. Uh, I would think, if I was guessing, they didn't leave it in the, in the, uh, the barrels very long. Uh, it's a decent beer, guys. Uh, it is definitely not a tin beer to me. Uh, and when you put bourbon barrel age all over the front label, uh, I'm, I'm expecting to get big bourbon notes and I'm not getting from this. Uh, if you've never had a bourbon barrel aged beer or you're not a fan of bourbon, maybe this might be the ticket, especially if you're buying this bottle and it's $11 like Rico paid for it. That is an exceptionally excellent buy for a great big bottle of 12% uh, uh, bourbon barrel aged beer, but yeah, that with a grain of salt, uh, and I can see why it was marked down because it's not exceptional. Uh, it is uh, fairly tasty. I am getting the roasted malt. I am getting a slight hint of some dark fruit, uh, uh, toffee, caramel, black molasses, brown sugar, uh, decent beer. No doubt about it does. It may be the best beer I've had from them because I've had some stuff from these guys before that were, was kind of, yeah. Uh, I think they do uh, a lot of transitional beers. Uh, I'm not exactly sure because uh, they're not distributed here in this part of uh, uh, Virginia. Uh, they may be uh, available in northern Virginia, but here in southwest Virginia, uh, not so much. So. Uh, Decent beer. Uh, it is a little on the boozy side. I'm getting more alcohol than I am anything else. So uh, maybe a good can of cellar for a while. And maybe that's why they're putting the wax on it. In case you want to lay it down or whatever. Uh, but I hate the wax. I got the blood to prove it. Uh, wax is made for uh, candles. Basically. It shouldn't be on beer or wine bottles. Uh, and wine bottles have corks and cages and they're meant to be laid down to keep the cork wet. That's the whole reason for that. So the air doesn't, you know, the cork doesn't dry out and you get air into the beer. This has a metal cap, a plastic liner. As long as the cap's put on correctly, the air is not going to get in. And it's going to keep for, 12% is going to keep for 15, 20 years. And the air is not going to get in. It's under pressure. The air is not going to get in. It's just a this is a way to charge more for the beers, guys. I'm, I will never, ever be convinced of anything other than that. That's all it's good for. Let's do the final chug. Decent beer. Nice aroma. Slightly boozy. Not enough bourbon to, to, 
to throw bourbon barrel aged on it and I know those barrels produce big bourbon notes so it's not even a, it's either not a first run barrel or they didn't leave it in there very long. Battle Chuck. We're not going to leave any though. Very nice beer guys. Like I said, I don't think it's a 10 beer. I don't even think it's a 9 beer. I'm going to give this an 8. The 8 miles. I wish they would put a vintage on it somewhere. This is a 2017 edition. I know with giving labels approved, uh, there's, it is a pain in the ass process. Uh, they could even put a label on the back of the beer. Uh, use the same label over on the front. And just put a label on the back with the government warning and what vintage it is. If they wanted to do that and they choose not to. So, well, I choose not to give it a better grade than an A-. I'm going to give it a 90. That's where I'm going to put this beer. Uh, I'm glad Rico got a good deal on it at $11. That is an exceptional good deal. But you got to realize what you're get drinking here. There are a lot better bourbon barrel aged beers than this at a 12%. But for a 750 milliliter bottle of a, of a bourbon barrel aged beer, that is a great price. But after drinking it, eh, I can see why that it was marked out. Uh, there's probably people that have had this and say, I've had that before, and it's not that impressive. Uh, this is not super impressive, but it's uh, a decent beer. But this would be a good one to get into a bourbon barrel aged beer if you don't like that big, huge bourbon notes that a lot of those beers have. This one does not have that. So, and uh, uh, probably a good can of to sell it for three, five, maybe even ten years. Uh, to let some of that booziness dissipate a little bit. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. So, with that being said, Rico, thanks again, my brother. I do appreciate you sending this to me. I do think it's probably the best beer from uh, River Horse that I've had, but it's still not into the 9 or 10 category. Uh, let's run over to Beer Advocate. They say 4.38, which is in their A-minus scale also, uh, which I agree with. And over to Untap, they have it at 4.16, which is also in their A minus category. So it's unanimous, guys. A minus beer all the way around. So if you've had this one from River Horse Brewing Company, this is their Stouty Stout, aged in bourbon barrels, and the bourbon is very subdued on this beer, uh, for one reason or another, whichever it may be. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, put some comments on if you've had this one. And until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.